Welcome to Homestead Reptile, and today I'm going to be talking about the Eastern Garter Snake, Amnophis sterellus sterellus. We're going to go over their care, their natural history, because I believe knowing an animal's natural history, how they behave in the wild, their wild habitats, their diet, their social behavior, really helps you to be able to care for them properly in captivity. So the Amnophis sterellus sterellus, or the Eastern Garter Snake, has a wide range in North America. So they have the largest range of any species of garter snake. So they can live as far north as southern Ontario and Quebec, very, very cold hellscape, to the Gulf of Mexico, to along the Mississippi River. They have a wide, wide range and a wide range of habitats from meadows. They will live in forests. They will live in wetlands. They will live in your garden. So they're one of the first species a lot of people encounter. So the Arnophis sterellus sterellus, or the Eastern Garter Snake, is also an extremely social snake. There's a lot of scientific papers out there saying they are social, they enjoy groups, they seek out company. They are extremely social. So to keep an Eastern Garter Snake properly, they need friends. This is a species of snake where you need cohab. Cohabbing is the best for Eastern Garter Snakes. Think of them like schooling fish, um, zebras grazing in a field. They need friendship. So this is a little video by this creator right here. And I'll leave the links in the description to credit his work of a Eastern Garter Snake hunting a frog. So this Eastern Garter Snake is tracking this frog down. It circles this frog several times and the frog freaks out, jumps for it. And this Eastern Garter Snake is chasing it down. You can see this is a very active searching predator. Unlike a, let's give an example of a ball python who would never behave like this. This would be abnormal behavior for a ball python. This is completely normal behavior for an eastern garter snake. So in the wild, these guys' main diet are amphibians. So these guys enjoy eating toads, frogs, tree frogs, aquatic, more aquatic frogs, salamanders, newts, and all larvae of these species. These guys are huge frog eaters. They will also in the wild eat slugs, snails worms, leeches, uh, fish, and they will occasionally eat the baby rodents or hatchling baby fledgling bird. So these are an occasional thing to their diet, the birds and the, the rodents. So baby rodents are super, super high in fat. And what I named out of their natural prey animals are really, really, really low fat animals. So here's my captive food pyramid. Chicken hearts, silver sides, night crawlers, Frog legs, uh, chicken gizzards, livers, reptilings, mice at the top. So why are mice at the top? So I believe, and most people that feed garter snakes, especially eastern garter snakes, pinky mice. Pinky mice are super, super, super high in fat. So they're about 17 to 30% fat. They're little fat balls. Think of them like the uh, Thanksgiving turkey of meats. So their natural prey animals are really, really, really low in fat. And even the, ch the chicken organs to supplement having a little bit more fat are really, really low in fat compared to a mouse. So the occasional mouse will not hurt your garter snake at all. But that example of that wild garter snake chasing down food, he's very active. Our domestic garter snakes, the ones in our households, we can't give them that type of activity. So a fish, the silver sides are between 3.3% fat. Chicken liver is also really low in fat. That's about 6% fat. That's barely anything. Then we have our chicken hearts, and that is a whopping 9% fat. That's, that's pretty much, again, nothing. And then we have our gizzards, and that is 4% fat. And then that is, again, nothing. So when you're giving these organ meats, also supplement with a little calcium and multivitamin. But organ meats, a lot of these different organ meats are really high in zinc, iron, uh, different saturated fats. Then we have um, calcium. So a lot of these do have really good things in it so this you should avoid you should avoid these things that we see at big box shops the little feeder fish so those are rosy red minnows also avoid goldfish these guys are high in thymines and will make your fish sick giving giving them a diet of this do not feed red wigglers thankfully most garter snakes won't even accept to eat these they are have a sort of toxin in them that make the sick that not the sick make the snake sick thymines in a nutshell so thymines are it basically binds to vitamin B1 and makes them deficient. So this results in thrashing, gasping, and seizures, and then later death. 
Red wigglers, again, like I said, they are toxic. Most gutter snakes won't eat them. Difference between a night crawler and a red wiggler. Night crawlers, yes. Red wiggler, no. So, this little guy right here is eating a little piece of chicken heart. So, I added a little fat to their diet. So, an eastern garter snake baby can live in a 10 gallon. So, this baby would be around the 5 to 12 inch. And then, a eastern garter snake, a mid-sized one, say a smaller male, like 16 to, you could even go to 18 for a larger male. Now, females would be better in this size. So, you could say between that 18 to 24 inches. So, temperature anywhere from 80 to 90, hot spot. Um, humidity, 35 to 60. Give them a large water bowl or a pond. That'd be even better for them to fully submerge. Foliage. Foliage this up. They love hiding spaces. The more hiding spaces you give them, the more likely they're going to be out and about and in the open because they feel secure. There's always a place to hide. These are very curious, gregarious snakes. They really enjoy interaction. They're always out and about. And I'm getting ready to feed this group right here. So what I like to do for my own kind of entertainment and their entertainment is... I will take my tongs or Q-tip and dip the food water, get a little scent of that prey, and I will dab it on their rocks, on their branches, and kind of make them hunt for it a little bit. Make a little trail and then hide the food in a certain spot. They absolutely love it. It makes them, it keeps them engaged. It's like they don't know where the food's going to be all the time. Hide it in interesting spots. Um, kind of make a little maze out of it. They enjoy that, actually. My garter snakes really enjoy that. So it's entertaining for a lot of people to do this. So, some, again, some interesting things, like I said about eastern garter snakes, they are social. That is very rare in snakes and very rare in most reptiles. Um, another kind of sad fact, so this um, Scott's Fris, uh, Fizzler, I can't pronounce his name, that guy, um, so he was pretty much the, had a ton of eastern garter snakes and had a ton of garter snakes in general. And they had some amazing morphs to the, the piebald eastern garter snake. The, uh, this white eastern garter snake, which was a lucidic, they had some amazing, amazing morphs that today are extinct in the hobby. So you can go, and I'll leave links in the description to his YouTube channel. He has quite a few videos. These videos are quite old. They're six years old. And these morphs have pretty much been extinct in the hobby for at least 10-ish years. And again, here's some more examples of the, that crazy, man, it's so sad that this is dead. Um, but a lot of those morphs are extinct and we're, it's been like 10 years in some cases and no one has found them. So I have my own little special guy, Baja Blast, and he's a very unique Eastern garter snake and he could be possibly a new morph. Um, and it'd be cool to put that back into the garter snake hobby because a lot of the old ones are gone. So Eastern garter snakes have a huge variety in their natural coloration, but there are some amazing morphs and they're extinct. So it's kind of interesting that you can go back and look at all these amazing things that are are gone they're functionally extinct in the hobby and the likelihood that you're going to run into another one of those in the wild are pretty low um so if this was interesting to you like and subscribe leave your your comments in the comments section and tell me what you think about eastern garter snakes and if you would enjoy watching a Another care guide of another species I own because I could go over the natural history of uh, crested geckos or New Caledonia geckos in general. But if this was interesting to you, again, like and subscribe and tell me what you think.